Good morning, everyone. Welcome to another webinar series from the Faculty of Medicines, Bioscience, and Nursing. If you're watching this live, don't forget to click the like button and share. Today, we have Dr. Yong Pai Kar, a lecturer from the School of Bioscience, Faculty of Medicine, Bioscience, and Nursing. Dr. Yong is going to deliver a talk about enzyme linked immunosorbent assay from basic to applications. If you have any question along this webinar, please drop it in the comment section as we will get back to you with some answers. Without further ado, let's hear it from Dr. Young. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. Good morning, all, and hope you all are keeping well and stay safe. Over the past few months, keeping well, stay safe, take good care, wear masks, wash hands, and hand sanitizer have becoming the new normal during the COVID-19 and will continue on in our life long until there's a cure or vaccine for COVID-19 or if herd immunity develops towards it. At this moment, ELISA does come into this important platform carrying along its important role, perhaps in vaccine development or screening process. In this morning, I want to share some information about the ELISA with you all, and this might be useful for those just getting started. Consider exploring the ELISAs. Okay. What is ELISA? ELISA stands for Enzyme-Linked Immunosorbent Assay. And ELISA is a plate-based assay technique designed for detecting and quantifying soluble substances such as the peptides, proteins, antibodies, and hormones. ELISA also often referred to as enzyme immunoassay, abbreviated as ERA. And ELISA, like other types of immunoassays, relies on antibodies to detect a target antigen using highly specific antibody-antigen interactions. As you all knew that, whether whenever we talk about the immuno or immunology, it is always related to the interactions between antigens and antibody. Thus, ELISA is a powerful method for detecting and quantifying a specific protein in a complex mixture. Okay. So, in an ELISA assay, the antigen must be immobilized to a solid surface, and this is done either directly or via the use of captured antibody itself immobilized on the surface. The antigen is then complex to a detection antibody conjugated with a molecule amenable for detection such as an enzyme or a fluorophore. Sometimes we call this as a receptor enzyme. An ELISA assay is typically performed in a multi-valve plate. It could be 96 valve plates or 284 valve plates. The multi valve plate provides the solid surface to immobilize the antigens. And immobilization of this analysis facilitates separation of the antigens from the rest of the components in the sample. These characteristics make ELISA one of the easiest assays to perform on multiple samples simultaneously. Okay, so as mentioned previously, in an ELISA, the antigens, which is the target macromolecule, is immobilized on a solid surface, which can be microplate, as we mentioned in the previous slides, and then complex with an antibody that is linked to reporter enzymes. Mm -hmm. Detection is accomplished by measuring the activity of the reporter enzyme, there, incubations with the appropriate substrate to produce measurable product. And the most crucial elements of an ELISA is a highly specific antibody antigen interactions. Although many variants of ELISA have been developed and used in different situations, 
They all depend on the same basic elements. Now, as shown in this slides, let us briefly go through each of the basic elements. The first step will involve the coating or capture. So in this step, direct or indirect immobilizations of antigens to the surface of the polystyrene of this uh, microplate valves, okay? And following this one, this uh, polystyrene plate is treated with the solutions of either antigens or antibody. The antigen used can be purified protein, peptide, or a crude protein extract. The choice of antigens will depend on the applications and the nature of the antibodies being tested. Protein binding to the plate is due to the hydrophobic interactions between the protein and the plastic. When we move on to the second step, which involves the blocking, okay, blocking reactions. An unrelated protein-based solution will be used to cover all unbound sites on the plates. Addition of irrelevant protein or other molecule to cover all unsaturated surface binding sites of this microplate valves. Once antigen is bound to the plates, it is important to block the remaining surface of the plate to prevent non-specific binding and the detection antibodies during the subsequent steps. Okay. So actually there's many blocking buffers that are available to block the free sites on the plate. For example, bovine serine, albumin, non-fat dry milk powders, and etc., which is prepared in phosphate buffer saline or in trees buffer saline with the minute percentage of 220 or Triton X100, okay, that can be used in this blocking buffer. So now let us move on to the third element, which involves the propping or detections. So after blocking the excess blocking agent, it's removed by washing the plate with a phosphate buffer saline, okay, PBS, which composed of the 220 or Triton X100. For some times, then the antigen containing wells are incubated with the primary antibody. Enzyme conjugated antibody or antigen binds specifically to the darker antigens, okay, or antibody. And this enzyme conjugated antibody or antigen by specifically to the target antigen or antibodies, okay, it will be uh, involved perhaps optimizations, okay, uh, including the optimizations of the antibody concentrations that is need to be done for getting better results. And antibody dilutions are made in phosphate buffer saline as well, or can be in the trace buffer saline as well. And this primary antibody incubations may be varied. Okay, it can be from several hours to even more incubation periods are required of um, to overnight. Okay, to acquire the good results. So secondary antibodies are conjugated with enzyme, which on reactions with substrate in developing solutions will ill the color. That's why we call this as an enzyme detector. Okay, because it will give rise to a color vision for our detections in these the elements. Now move on to the final elements, which is the fourth element, which, which uh, involve the signal measurements or reading the results. At these steps, okay, at this, um, this signal measurement steps, substrate is added. And the signal produced by the enzyme substrate reactions will be measured. A developing solution having a chromogenic substrate, this is the crucial part, the fluorophore part, the fluorophore components, the chromogenic substrate is added to the wells. The enzyme reacts with the substrate and gives colors. The intensity of the color will be proportional to the amount of secondary antibody which proportional to the amount of specific primary antibody in the sample. This apply to the general applications because <clears throat> later on when we move on to the types of lysons, these principles 
might be modified slightly, okay, based on the types of the ELISA. Okay, so alternatively, a constant amount of the defined antibody can be used to quantify the amount of a specific protein in the samples. Okay, so this that's all. This is all the four elements, basic elements for the ELISA. Okay, so from the description just now, we have um, seen that there's uh, several uh, modifications and steps along these uh, four elements. And thus, it will raise up the types of the ELISAs. There are several formats used for ELISAs. This fall into either direct ELISA, indirect ELISA, sandwich ELISA, or competitive capture and detection methods. The key step is immobilization of the antigens of interest accomplished by either direct absorption to the assay plate, like what we mentioned just now in the previous slides, or indirectly there are a capture antibody that has been attached to the plate. So you can see there's a variation of the methods, okay, or those that are applying the same general principles. The antigen is then detected either directly okay, through the label primary antibody or indirectly, such as label secondary antibody. But the most widely used ELISA assay format is the sandwich ELISA assay, which indirectly immobilizes and indirectly detects the presence of the target antigens. This type of capture assay is called a sandwich assay because the analyte to be measured is found between two primary antibodies. We will see in more details in the subsequent slides. Okay, so now let us go through one by one each types of the ELISA. First, direct ELISA. The antigens, as shown in the figures in this slide, the antigen is immobilized to the surface of the multivar plate and detected with an antibody specific for the antigen and directly conjugated to horse radis prostatase or other detection molecules. The direct detection method uses a primary antibody labeled with reporter enzymes or attack directs directly with the antigens. Direct detections can be performed with an antigen that is directly immobilized on the assay plate or with the capture assay format. Direct detections, while not widely used in ELISA, is quite common for immunohistochemical staining of tissues and cells. This is for examples. Okay. So you all may be also curious about what, is, what will be the advantages for this direct ELISA. One of the advantages for this direct ELISA will be faster than other ELISAs. What's the reason? Because the tannics has just a fewer steps, less prone to error, as less reagents and fewer steps are required. But however, it also composed of disadvantages, which includes antigens immobilization is not specific, may cause, and this may cause a higher background noise than indirect ELISA, mainly because all proteins in the samples, including the target protein, will bind to the plate. And as well, it is less flexible because each target protein needs a specific conjugated primary antibody if without the secondary antibody. Okay, so that is briefly about the direct ELISA. How about the indirect ELISA? Similar to direct ELISA acid, the antigen is immobilized to the surface of the multivar plate. However, a two-step process is required for detections whereby a primary antibody specific for the antigen Bias to the target and a label secondary antibody against the whole spe species of the primary antibody bias to the primary antibody for detections. The method can be also be used to detect a specific antibodies in a serum sample by substituting the serum for the primary antibody. 
This is the alternate okay, for this indirect ELISA. And the indirect detection method uses a liver secondary antibody or a biotin structural okay, VD complex. This is the common okay, for amplifications and is the most popular format for ELISA. And the secondary antibody has specifically for the primary antibody. In this, okay, so uh, this will be the uh, indirect ELISAs. Then, uh, how about the advantages? It will evolve the high sensitivity compared to the direct ELISA. Okay, it composes a higher sensitivity. More than one label secondary antibody can be by the primary antibody. This is the reason why it composes a higher sensitivity if compared to the direct ELISA. And besides that, it composes of greater flexibility. This is because different primary antibodies can be used with a single label secondary antibody. However, it also composes of disadvantages which the possibility of background noise because the secondary antibody may be cross-reactive okay, with others of the particles. A longer procedure than the direct ELISA techniques that this will prone to an additional incubation step for secondary antibody needed. Okay, so now let's move on to this uh, sandwich ELISA. Okay, it's the most commonly used format. And this format requires two antibodies specific for different epitopes of the antigens. And these two antibodies are normally referred to as match antibody pairs. And one of the antibodies is coated on the surface of the multi valve plate and used as a capture antibody okay, to facilitate the immobilization of the antigen. The other antibody is conjugated and facilitates the detection of the antigens. And the advantages will be involved, um, also seen as the indirect uh, ELISAs having a higher sensitivity, two to five times more sensitive than direct or indirect ELISA, although it is having a higher sensitivity, but it is two to five times higher okay, compared to direct even indirect ELISA. And in addition, in addition to its higher sensitivity, it composes also higher specificity. Okay, two antibodies are involved in capture and detections. That's why it contributes to a higher specificity compared to the direct and indirect ELISA. However, okay, same as direct and indirect ELISA, it composes of is not yet the perfect matters. It composes of disadvantages as well. Okay, the antibody optimizations can be difficult, seems uh, due to the cross reactivity may occur between the capture and detection antibodies. Needs a standardized ELISA kit or tested antibody pair. So there might be a certain uh, times required okay, uh, to work out for the optimizations part for these sandwich ELISAs. Now we move on to this uh, competitive ELISA. Actually, how this competitive ELISA works? The competitive in B, or we can call it as uh, inhibition ELISAs, okay? It also can be known or termed as blocking ELISA. It perhaps the most complex of all the ELISA techniques, okay? Perhaps, however, each of the above assay types can be adapted to this competitive format. Okay, it means that regardless of direct, indirect, or sandwich ELISA can be adapted to this competitive format. And this competitive in or inhibition ELISA is predominantly used to measure the concentrations of an antigens or antibody in a sample by detecting interference in an expected signal output. Essentially, okay, essentially, okay, the sample antigen or antibody competes, okay, with a reference for abiding to limited amount of label antibody or antigen. 
So this is the crucial part. This is a crucial principle for this uh, competitive ELISA. Okay, so the higher the sample antigens concentrations, the weaker the output signal, and indicating that the signal output inversely correlates with the amount of antigens in the sample. Is it sounds quite in a little bit different from the principles that we have mentioned in the previous slides for the overall uh, techniques of these ELISAs? It's inversely proportional. Okay, it's not directly proportional for the concentrations as well the signals that arise from the readings. So the samples antigens competes okay, with a reference antigens for binding to a specific amount of labor antibody. The reference antigen is precluded on a multi-well plate. Okay, so this is a reference antigens. It's not the antigen from the samples. Okay, will be precluded on the multi -well plate. And the sample is pre incubated with labeled antibody and added to the wells. So, depending on the amount of antigens in the samples, more or less, the free antibodies okay, <clears throat> will be available to buy the reference antigens. And this means the more antigen there is in the sample, the last reference antigen will be detected and the weaker the signal. And some competitive ELISA kits use label antigen instead of label antibody. The label antigens and the sample antigens, which is unlabeled, will compete for binding to the primary antibody. And the lower the amount of antigens okay, in the sample, the stronger the signal due to more label antigens in the valve. And what will be the advantages for this uh, competitive ELISA? The main advantage, no sample processing is required. And also the crude or impure samples can be used. This is the main advantage. Okay, So more consistent, less variability between the duplicate samples and assays, and maximum flexibility. It can be based on direct or indirect or sandwich ELISA. But however, okay, uh, the disadvantages will include the same limitations as base ELISA, as each ELISA technique, it has been adapted from this uh, direct or indirect or sandwich ELISA. So same limitation as base ELISA. Okay, so perhaps uh, from this figure, we can see more details, okay, for examples of the competitive ELISA. Okay. As shown in the figures, the primary okay, at the first row, okay, the primary antibody, which is unlabeled, is incubated with sample antigens. Okay, incubated with the sample antigens. Antibody antigen complexes are then added to the 96 bar plates which are precluded with the same antigens, precluded with the same antigens on the 96 bar plate. And this unbound antibody <clears throat> is removed by washing the plate. The more antigen in the sample, the less antibody will be able to bind to the antigen in the well, hence competitions. This is the words where the competitions come from. Okay. The secondary antibody that is specific to the primary antibody and conjugated with an enzyme is added later on. Okay. So a substrate is added okay, in the fourth steps of the element and remaining enzymes elicit a chromogenic or fluorescent signals. Depends on the uh, detection methods. Okay, for competitive ELISA, the higher the sample antigens concentrations, the weaker the eventual signals. Okay, so up to this stage, I'm sure most of you already have an idea about the basic of ELISA. Now, let us move on to the applications of the ELISA. Okay, are you ready? Okay to move on to the applications of the ELISAs. Okay. What do you think 
that how ELISA can be applied in various different fields. Okay, so can you spend a few seconds to have a think on it? Okay, how this ELISA can be applied in various different fields? Okay, so okay, now, okay, so uh, let us have a general overview on the broad spectrum of ELISA's applications. Several so examples for applications of this widely applied technique in the areas of industry, vaccine development, okay, immunology, diagnosis, toxicology, drug monitoring, as well as pharmaceutical industry, and also the transplantation. And each of these will be briefly discussed or shared in these sections. Okay, so now let us start with the food allergen. Okay, food allergens. Okay, so ELISA plays a major role in food industry. It is the main platform for identifying food allergens, such as those present in the milk, peanuts, walnuts, almonds, as well as the eggs. ELISA can also be employed to collaborate the authenticity of the food products and this technique is of great help to avoid possible economy losses caused by the fraudulent substitutions. Okay. So okay, now uh, in the case of the meat and meat-based products, ELISA has proven to be reliable techniques that provides careful monitoring of the products, especially when religious considerations in the choice of food are concerned. ELISA is also an essential tank for quality control of fish, milk, as well as maybe their sub products, genetically modified foods, irradiated foods, or other harmful food components that can be transferred to humans such as bovine spongiform encephalopathy, for example. No meat proteins such as a soybean have valuable nutritional properties. Nonetheless, due to the similarity to the main product, they are seldom added to the meat products undeclared. And this careful monitoring of the products with ELISA prevent such alterations. Unethical competitions for higher economic gain often lead to the potential health hazard to the consumed food and beverage. Production of ELISA kits for food industry applications is challenging as the selections of adequate control and also the standard sample is necessary to carefully calibrate the assay. So additionally, ELISA can target different types of analysis. In the same food samples, does the manufacturers should provide a complete set of key components for the potential target biomolecules. Okay, so this is briefly about the food industry that contributed by the ELISA. Okay, so now, okay, let us move on to the vaccine applications okay so especially now the covid uh, 19 vaccine development okay actually is a long and intensive process okay and there are several stages of vaccine development and testing and it began with an exploratory exploratory stage to identify natural or synthetic antigens and following this one it involves the preclinical work begins and cell culture and animals models are used to determine the immunogenicity and maybe the safety of a vaccine candidate so following the approval okay so following the approval of perhaps depends on the countries uh, from the corresponding body or department, clinical trials may begin, may only begin. Okay. 
by the approval by a corresponding body or department. And specialized assays are developed in the preclinical and early clinical trial phases and are validated in later clinical trial phases. And this specialized assays included ELISA. Okay, included the ELISA. ELISA served as a great candidate for vaccine development. Okay. The serial sample from the immunized animal of human model can be tested to detect the presence of antibodies against certain types of antigens which were intentionally injected to the host. Normally, different antigens are used to produce the immune reactions in the host, among which those that elect higher protection response with less adverse effects can be selected. Okay, so okay, this is uh, important. Okay, so it is important for manufacturers of inactivated vaccine to test the immunogenicity of final vaccine formulations for both practical and ethical reasons. The replacement of in vitro potency tests by more rapid and as well reliable in vitro methods is highly desirable. A vaccine potency testing for batch approval requires the immunizations of several negative organisms and subsequent detections of virus neutralizing antibodies induced by the vaccine. So this procedure is expensive and as well time consuming. Additionally, enrolling viral antigen through negative animal is becoming increasingly difficult due to the endemic nature of the infections. An alternative is the measurements of the viral antigens by the ELISA. Data reported for other viral system supports the introductions of in vitro assays to measure vaccine potency, and this including ELISA. Okay, so this is about the vaccine development for the ELISA. Okay, now let us see how about immunology applications. Okay, so the defender of the body, the immune system, can operate in cellular or humoral, or we can term it as well as innate or adaptive modes. It measuring and monitoring the changes of the immune response, underlay the foundations for understanding the immune disease. Various studies have demonstrated ELISA as the gold standard method that is rapid and cost effective for such measurements and monitoring. A great number of examples for ELISA applications in immunology are reported. While some efforts were directed to optimize ELISA protocols further and to validate or to establish their accuracy, sensitivity and specificity to support the clinical practice. And multiple infections, environmental factors, and also a more immune system failings trigger and autoimmune responses through the uncontrolled immune system activations. The body produces antibodies in response to different types of external pathogens. And these external pathogens can be particles or epitopes that penetrated the cells but later have become part of the cell structure. In such situations, antibodies react against the cells themselves, resulting in immunodeficiency-oriented phenotype. However, ELISA has shown high sensitivity as well as specificity in detecting circulating autoantibodies against the corresponding epitopes to this illness. So thus, ELISA has shown a great potential 
in studying the humoral response of the immune system towards different classes of infectious, okay, as well. Humoral immunity response involves the substances, including antibodies and other components that assist in the body fluids that can be treated as the samples, okay, and measurements of these components are of great importance, okay. So now, uh, how about the diagnosis applications? Okay, how about the diagnosis applications? Okay, in the area of diagnosis, ELISA has proven to be capable platform. Apply worldwide to, uh, for detecting variety of uh, disease types, okay, and in human and animals. A number of different commercial ELISA kits are available in the market for detections of uh, HIV for examples, okay, as well influenza, dengue fever, okay, and also the West Nile virus. So this is the available examples of the available ELISA kits, okay, in the market that can be applied. Even in plant pathology, ELISA tannic is attracting increasing attention and ELISA has successfully overcome the drawbacks of the previous logical analysis performed in um, the fetal diagnosis. Okay, so uh, besides that, okay, others are very common available commercial kits will be including the um, perhaps the pregnancy test, okay, pregnancy test. A number of different biomolecular entities, okay, that related to this pregnancy test, including the human coronic gonadotropin HCG, as well the neutralizing hormone the HLH, the follicle stimulating hormone HFSH, the estriol E3, and also the triotropin stimulating hormone TSH, can be as Press, okay, due to the pregnancy. So ELISA can detect some of these proteins from the maternal blood, saliva, or urine at the clear stages, at the early stages of the pregnancy. For example, HCG is one of the common hormones that can be detected by the ELISA during the first month after fertilization. Another biomolecule associated with pregnancies is estriol that can be detected with ELISA in the saliva, perhaps in the sixth week of pregnancy. Besides that, how about the cancer detections? Highly sensitive detections of cancer provides with the early stage, stage diagnostic, which is crucial for patient survival and cancer biomarkers. However, are some of the most challenging biomolecule entities as target analysts. Advancement of ELISA techniques has promises applications in detections of cancer biomarkers. So sometimes the tested specimens are hard to be obtained. Therefore, even the small sample volume is highly valuable. For instance, in the case of ovarian cancer, for example, the glycoprotein CA125 present in the serum is the appropriate choice of biomarker for timely detections. Okay, and there's a study have uh, developed a cost-effective ELISA-based platform for this uh, CA125 detections that requires a few just some microliters of serums only. Okay, then uh, as well the infectious diseases. Okay, even to date, ELISA-based infectious serology marks one of the most reliable means for accurate diagnosis and prognosis. There's a broad range of developed and marketed state-of-art essays 
for the detections of this uh, infectious agent. ELISA has offered a high throughput detections in three classes of infectious diseases. First one, sexually transmitted diseases. It's just, it's uh, as well, and also the, uh, perhaps the regional or endemic diseases, which often referred to as a uh, tropical diseases, are quite spread in tropical and subtropical regions. And as well, the third one, okay, the third class will be the torch, T O R C H, referred to as toxoplasma, other infectious, rubella, cytomegalovirus, herpes simplex, which is a group of viral pathogens that may result in prenatal infectious. Okay, so that's about the diagnosis. How about the toxicology? Okay, how about the toxicology? Toxicology involves studying the adverse effects of chemical compounds on the living organisms. And this area covers diagnosis and curing the effects of toxins, okay, uh, including antigenic agents from plants or from the animal's origins, as well as um, toxicants, okay, including the toxic substances released into the environment. The correlations between the dosage of toxic materials and its effects on the exposed organisms, roots of the exposures, origin of the toxic substances, and characteristics of the affected organs are the major concentrations in toxicology studies. And competitive ELISA has a long history of being applied for detections of aflatoxins B1. For example, one of the known toxins from the rice. And this developed immunoassay for aflatoxins monitoring is rapid and straightforward while offering desirable specificity and sensitivity. So this competitive assay, okay, developed for this purpose were also reported to have a considerably long shelf life, at least 12 months at room temperatures. In another studies, okay, um, the direct ELISA was, as, was employed for regular screening of drugs, the drugs such as the amphetamines and the, maybe perhaps the the methamphetamines in biological fluids to analyze a cross reactivity of the compounds, predetermine concentrations of, of these common uh, amphetamine type substances, okay, the designer analogs as well the purificative uh, amounts were measured. So obtained data indicated that the direct ELISA techniques was a rapid and reliable for the presumptive screening of this amphetamine and the methamphetamine in forensic samples. Okay, so now, okay, let us uh, briefly move on to this uh, drug monitoring and as well as pharmaceutical industry. Okay, so ELISA tennis, okay, have absorbs. Okay, uh, have found absorbs and found variety of applications in the screening certain classes of uh, drugs in plasma, the conventional therapeutic drug monitoring, TDM strategies monitor drug levels in the plasma samples. So TDM also provides information regarding the treatment procedures allowing physicians to examine if the medications is present in patient's body. However, the conventional TDM technique is expensive and technically demanding. As an alternative strategy, ELASA-based TDM has been introduced as a thesaurus and cost-effective method for measuring the concentrations of the drugs in plasma samples. In particular, 
the aim of the study was to assess okay uh, when we would like to conduct carry out a study which the aim to assess the plasma okay lpv levels by this uh, tdm elisa in youth with a uh, prenatally acquired hiv will be the um uh, common examples okay for these uh, elisa applications in the toxicology fields okay so as well in another studies elisa based platform was employed for monitoring the level of anti drug antibodies in patients receiving treatment for uh, rheumatoid arthritis as well the inflammatory bowel disease and this strategy shows that okay the the okay this strategy shows that elisa incorporate those features identified in the literature as important for the accurate analysis of anti drug antibodies providing a relatively simple and low cost assay for therapeutic drug monitoring so offering a high specificity in immunoassays for therapeutic proteins is an important consideration when such assays are used to assess the pharmacokinetics uh, bioequivalence as well toxicokinetics studies okay so now lastly okay so let us move on to the transplantation okay so when transplantation is required the pre-transplant cross-matching test represents one of the most important steps for a successful relocation of the organs complement dependent cytotoxicity cross-match cdccm as it was developed almost four decades ago to assess the compatibility of the given organs into the body of the receptors. So selecting recipients without donor-specific antibodies is of crucial importance to increase the survival rate in the patients who are subject to the transplantations. In particular, CDC-CM plays a vital role for the recipients who undergo treatments with special drugs, therapeutic antibodies, or suffer from autoimmune diseases. Okay, so however, CDCSM tests require lymphocytes isolations from the donors, which typically has a limited availability. And at this time, ELISA-based cross-matching tests has demonstrated to be an adequate substitute procedures for such analysis reported. Okay, there's a studies reported that ELISA based cross matching approach for identifying the donor specific anti human leukocyte antibodies, HRA, by using the deep frozen blood or splint detergent slicing from the deceased donor. So this strategy permits the cross matching comparison to the frequently performed between the recipient's anti-HRA antibody and the donor's historically identified HRA types to monitor any incompatibility between the examined samples. Okay, so that's all for the, the common applications of the ELISA. Okay, so relink back to the beginning of the share, this sharing session, we have touched about the pandemic, the COVID nineteen pandemic. Okay, so how was this uh, Eliza come into this important platform to contribute in response to the rapid spread of the new coronavirus SARS COVID ten? Okay. Some okay, companies develop ELISA kits for the detections of human IgG or um, IgM antibodies against the virus in serum plasma to aid the vaccine and other COVID-19 related research. 
and using an ELISA to detect uh, this uh, SARS coronavirus to antibodies is typically considered a more efficient choice than a lateral flow immunoassays, which is commonly used for clinical diagnostics due to the speed at which they can be performed. And ELISA is also the more sensitive of the two assays. Okay, so the enzyme-linked immunosorbent assays are of the detections of human IgG IG or IgM antibodies specific for this SARS coronavirus 2, specifically the RBD protein, okay, uh, in serum or plasma. Okay, and this RBD is responsible for the entry of the virus into the human cells where the SCE receptors okay, is in some way similar to the SARS coronavirus that caused the SARS outbreak perhaps in 2003. The spike protein of the SARS coronavirus 2 is evolutionarily distinct. So instead, the spike proteins of SARS coronavirus shares 97 point, uh, maybe a a more than 90% identity with the spike protein of the um, of that the bat coronavirus from which is originated. Okay, so the receptor binding domains for this RBD differ from the receptor binding domain of the spike proteins of this SARS coronavirus and several bat coronavirus with many amino acid substituents and insertions. Okay, so but regardless of uh, what stages of the development of the studies and research for this recent pandemics. Okay. Uh, it, is it, it is hypothesized that the spike proteins uh, of this uh, SARS coronavirus, coronavirus 2 is one of the most immunogenic of its proteins. And this making it a good candidate for an ELISA to detect an immune response to SARS coronavirus 2. And this hypothesis is based on the studies of patients infected with the related virus, showing that antibodies against portions of this S proteins could be detected in all patients in the studies, okay, that uh, partially have been proved. And these antibodies were present for at least. 30 weeks following the onset of the disease. So is all this have been concluded as ELISA have come into the important play or roles in this pandemic platform. Okay, so um, here will be the main source of the information. Okay, so you can refer to all these references. Okay, refer to all these references for the contents of today's uh, sharing sessions. Okay, hope you all enjoy the, uh, this morning's sharing sessions about the ELISAs and thank you. Okay. So thank you, Dr. Yong, for the details about ELISA. Now, if you're still watching this and having any questions, you may drop it in the comment section. By that, we, uh, me and Dr. Young will try to scroll all the uh, questions at the comment section. So feel free to ask any questions. So no questions. By that, I would like to thank everyone for watching and feel free to follow Masa University Facebook page for updates regarding the upcoming events and webinar. If you have any inquiry about our available program in Faculty of Medicines, Bioscience and Nursing, please visit www.master.edu.my. Stay safe and stay healthy. Thank you.